Hi, this is Michael, and today I want to show you this new espresso machine. This is the Wersch Home Barista Pro Bean to Espresso Machine. I've been using it for a few weeks now, so I've got a lot of good experience with it. Can't wait to show it to you. Here's what you get in the package. These are all the accessories that are included. Uh, this is a portafilter. This is all metal. There's no plastic inside, so it's 58 millimeter, very standard size, but quite nice. You get four filter baskets. You get two single shot baskets and two double shot baskets. Why two of each? Well, because one is a conventional basket. The other one is what we call a pressurized basket. This only has a single extraction hole in the bottom here. And what happens with the pressurized basket is if you are purchasing store-bought pre-ground coffee, a couple of things. A, it's not fresh. It may have a best buy date on it, but in order to get the best coffee, you need freshly ground coffee. And we're talking within a week or two, you want to use that coffee to get the best crema. So when you're buying store-bought coffee, you're getting older beans. They're not going to develop much crema. That's what you use a pressurized basket for to help extract as much crema as possible out of those beans. Crema is developed by the carbon dioxide coming out of the beans under pressure. And uh, the older the beans, the less carbon dioxide that's available. So there you have it. Uh, you also get a very nice stainless steel frothing pitcher, and you also get a very nice all metal, very substantial tamper, 58 millimeters. The machine itself is uh, mostly plastic construction. You do have some stainless steel accents here. The back panel and the front of the drip tray and the drip tray itself is all stainless steel, but most everything else is plastic and some chromed plastic. It's quite an attractive machine. It does have a little LED light underneath here. Every time you start to grind coffee, that little LED illuminates and just looks kind of cool. And then up on top here, we have the bean hopper. That's where you're gonna insert your beans. You actually do have to install the bean hopper when you first take the machine out of the box. This is how that is done. Uh, then on the panel, you've got a series of buttons here, touch buttons, and they're illuminated from behind. And this is the on off button. So this puts the machine into standby mode and this light will be dimly lit. So when you get up first thing in the morning, you're a little groggy, this will be on. And then you just push it to turn the machine on totally. This light will blink for about 45 seconds if the machine hasn't been used in a few hours. Once it reaches temperature, it'll become brighter and all the lights will then illuminate. So this first button here is for grinding a single shot of espresso. The second button is for grinding a double shot of espresso. This is for pulling a single shot, and this is for pulling a double shot. And then this is the program button on the far end. So you can actually program this machine if you don't like the default buttons. For instance, when you're grinding the beans, it is preset to grind for a certain amount of time uh, for either the single or the double. However, if it's not giving you enough coffee, then you would press and hold the either button and you would continue holding it while it's grinding and then you will release it when it has ground the amount of coffee that you think it should be grinding. That'll go into the memory. So it'll remember that from here on out. If you want to reset it to the default values, you can do that. Same holds true for the uh, volumetric uh, water that comes out of here. So basically one ounce for a single shot, two ounces for a double shot, but if you want a little bit more or a little bit less, you can also program those buttons and you can reset those buttons. In the middle here we have a very nice, and actually this is a very useful pressure gauge. It's not just there for show. Uh, this pressure gauge will guide you in dialing in the correct grind. Uh, if you're grinding your beans too coarsely, and not tamping hard enough, that's just gonna let the water go through the grinds very quickly, and your shot will probably pull in less than 15 seconds, and that's no good. On the other hand, if your grind is too fine and or tamping too hard, you're gonna find the dial going way past the red and out of the red, and that means way too high pressure. It's not able to push the water through the grounds, and therefore you are going to get a very long extraction time. It might be a minute or more, and it's not going to be very good. It'll probably be very bitter because that water's been sitting in the grounds and it's just taking so long to get through there. So you really want this dial to be right about in the middle of the red zone 
and you want about 30 seconds to extract your espresso. So that's when I say dialing in your grind. It's going to take you a couple times because that can depend on what type of bean you're using. Different beans will just grind a little differently. So uh, the first shot you pull, it might take you two or three shots to get this dialed in just right. For instance, when I first got the machine, I set it to 10 and uh, that was just way too fine. So for the beans that I'm using, I had to set it to about 15. So there, there you go. Just something to help you out, get you in the ballpark. The drip tray down below here, uh, this pulls out and uh, it has a stainless steel top on it. When you first unbox the machine, you will find a set of tools inside the drip tray. Make sure that those are there and I'll explain those in just a minute or two. The drip tray also has a red float in there and as this fills up with water, this float will rise up and that will stick through the tray uh, top here and that just alerts you that your drip tray is almost going to be overflowing if you don't empty it out. So just make sure you pay attention to that. After you use the steam wand and are done steaming your milk, the machine will actually run some water through the machine to get the temperature down so that you can make your next espresso. And in so doing, it does eject water into the drip tray. So even if you don't think there's water in there, there probably is, and that's why uh, it's really handy to have that little float in there. The top of the machine gives you a little extra space to place your cups. Uh, that'll pre-warm your cups if you're making a bunch of espressos. If you're just making your own single shot of espresso in the morning, that's not really going to have enough time to warm up very much, so it's not going to be that useful. But if you have your machine on during the day and you're uh, making espresso for a lot of other people, that will come in handy. It's also a place to store the tamper, and you can also put the filter baskets that you're not using. You can just rest those up there. Now, as far as the tools that you get, you get a couple of brushes, and then you get a little tool that has uh, some small pins on it. This is used for cleaning the hole that is in the pressurized basket that I mentioned earlier. And let me just show that to you. So there is a very, very, very tiny hole here. And this thin pin is what you would stick in there. And that just lets you clean this out. Because after you use this a few times, uh, coffee grounds will just tend to collect there. And eventually it'll plug it up. So that's what you use the pin for. Now the larger pin, that is used for cleaning the end of the steam wand. There's a very tiny hole there, and again, this pin is just inserted. You don't have to use this every single time, but you do want to use it maybe once a week or so just to make sure the steam wand is clean. And also, speaking of that, uh, every time you use the steam wand, you want to make sure that you uh, eject either a little water or a little steam through it when you're done. And that'll just go right into the drip tray. Make sure it's positioned over the hole, and that'll just clean out the hole. And also, you want to use a damp rag immediately after you texturize your milk to clean the steam wand. Otherwise, the milk that is uh, on the steam wand will basically get baked on there, and that's very difficult to remove. So you want to remove it before it has time to do that. A little damp rag will be your best friend there. Also, after you make a shot of espresso, you do want to wipe the uh, inside out because there will be some coffee grounds sticking to the screen inside here, and you just want to keep everything clean. On the back of the machine is the water reservoir. It's a rather large reservoir, and uh, you can either just lift the lid to fill it, or you can actually remove it and take it over to your water source. Now, I highly recommend that you use filtered water. If you don't have an under sink water filter, uh, then you should really get some sort of water filter like a pure filter or anything that sits on your counter that you can filter your water. Uh, water does have minerals in it and uh, the more minerals the water has, the more it can tend to clog up the internal plumbing in the machine. So having said that, you also do want to descale your machine periodically. And you can do that by using a combination of white vinegar mixed with water. I usually do about a 50-50 mixture. You don't have to fill the entire tank, but you do want to fill it probably about halfway. 
uh, white vinegar and water and then you run it through the machine. I'm going to have a series of videos on this espresso machine so I'm not going to cover everything in great detail in this video but just so you know and just keep an eye on my channel. Subscribe. Yeah, make sure you get instant notifications when I uh, upload new videos. All right, let's make some espresso. So I'm going to get the portafilter. I'm going to put in the single shot standard basket and I'm going to insert it underneath the grinder here and I'm just going to push the single Now the way the grinder works is it's just grinding for a predetermined amount of time like I mentioned earlier. If it's not grinding enough or if it's grinding too much, you can modify that by using the technique that I mentioned earlier. So once it's ground, then I bring this over to the countertop and you want to tap it a little bit. The grounds are kind of fluffy when they're first ground, but they will settle and that's why you tap it like this. I also use my finger and I just make sure it's kind of flat and even. Then get your tamper and again you want to uh, sort of press down firmly but not too firmly. Give it a little rotation as you push it down and you want to make sure it's level and we want about 20 to 30 pounds of pressure here and you want it nice and flat on the top. Let me just show you how that looks. So we just go back over to the group head insert it at about a 45 degree angle and then just rotate it so the handle is sticking straight out and that's as far as it will go. You don't have to worry about going too far because it will stop. Place your cup that you want to uh, put your espresso into right underneath and then just push a single shot here. We made a single shot so we'll push the single button. This does a brief pre-infusion to get the grounds wet and then it continues now you can see my pressure is right up almost to the maximum, so I may have pressed a little too firmly. It's still okay though, as long as this doesn't take more than about 30 seconds. You can sort of tell that it's not coming out really fast, so I really did tamp a little too hard. And this is part of the dialing in process. So when I make my next shot, I'll know that I need not to press quite as hard. Now I think we are exceeding, well, it's just probably about 30 seconds. So there is my shot. Now if I wanted to make an Americano at this point, I would get another cup, walk over to the steam wand, and put it right under here, and then move the dial on the right side of the machine clockwise to the water, hot water position. And hot water is going to start coming out here. This is your judgment call. You just get as much hot water as you think you want. For an Americano, you don't probably want more than uh, two or three ounces. So there we go. And then get your espresso and just pour it into the cup. And you've got a very nice Americano. And there we have it. When you're done, then you've got to remove this. And uh, now I use what's called a knock box. This is a metal box that you can put on your counter. It has a bar across it. And that's just so that you can smack this down and cause the grounds to come out. If you don't have a knock box, you may want to get one. They're really handy. But if you don't have one, then you'll have to go over to your sink and get the coffee out that way. And like I mentioned, you do want to wipe the inside of the group head out to get the loose grounds out. And you can even run some water through there. Uh, that'll help clean it out. You don't have to do this every time, but you can just push the button and that'll run some water through the group head. And then any process that is occurring, if you push the same button again, that'll stop the process. So we just wanted to get a little water through there to clean the group head, and now we're done. So that is it. Now if you want to steam your milk, let's take a look at that process. So when you're steaming your milk, you can use whole milk, you can use skim milk, 2% milk, you can even use almond milk or soy milk. Uh, best results, dairy milk is the best to use. This is um, actually just regular milk, it's not 2%. You want to fill your frothing pitcher about halfway and then come back over to the machine. Uh, you want to uh, move the dial to the steam mode 
and then you're going to see the LED light blinking on the front. That means that it is warming up. This uses a thermal block inside instead of a actual boiler. Uh, and it heats up the thermal block to a higher temperature, high enough to make steam. So once it starts to make steam, it'll start coming out of here. You can then turn it off, get your pitcher into position, and then turn it back on to the steam mode. Basically, you want the milk to circulate. And ideally, you don't want to exceed about 150 degrees. So once the pitcher gets hot enough that you can't really hold it anymore, that means you're probably around 150 degrees. But you should also get almost a doubling of volume. Turn it off, get your rag. You want to clean that off immediately. And then you can also pull it over and just uh, run a little more steam through there just to clean the nozzle. So there we have our texturized milk. Usually just tap it on the counter to make sure you get rid of all the big bubbles. And then just pour it in. And there you have it. Now you can hear the machine running right now. Like I mentioned, what it's doing right now is it's running th some water through it in order to cool this back down so that we're ready to make another espresso. And that water is in the drip tray and you'll have to empty that out eventually. But the little red marker isn't up so I don't have to worry about that right now. So that is about it. I'm going to make another couple videos here to show you how to clean the grinder and just basic maintenance stuff. So keep an eye on the channel. I hope you enjoyed this. I think this is a great machine. And if you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. I'll try to answer them if I can. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll catch you the next time.